Hello, this is Alex. Welcome to Boomstick Gaming and my full review for the Warlords of New York DLC for The Division 2. This big new paid expansion accompanies a huge free update that reworks much of the core elements of The Division 2. I'm going to cover both of what Warlords brings to the table with its new map, loot, and endgame while also breaking down the current state of The Division 2 now in 2020 after the big overhaul patch. There is a ton to get into here, so let's get right to it. Warlords of New York ups the level cap of the Division 2 to level 40 and transports you away to a brand new but familiar region set in New York City that is roughly half the total size of the main campaign's area. Strangely, once you depart for this new map, you will not be able to return home until you finish the main story of Warlords, which is an odd feeling to be temporarily locked out of the core map, but if you're able to start the expansion, to be fair, you could probably use the break of Washington, D.C. With no snow covering the beauty of this stylized apocalyptic version of New York City, you're able to really take in and appreciate the details of this visually appealing new area. It's still a lot of standard buildings all over, but the outskirt areas really make a lasting impression thanks to the attention to detail that you can really tell was put into the core level design. In this new map, you'll be doing the standard control point takeover, searching for SHD caches and doing side quests, but most importantly, you'll be working towards revealing the location of each of the four warlords that will ultimately lead you to the big bad head honcho. If you have dabbled into some of the more recent Far Cry games or Ghost Recon, this system should be quite familiar to you. The new main missions all have themes that go along with each warlord you're hunting, and the showdown with each of them offers up some of the best boss battles of the entire series. There are also technically four, although it's more like three and a half, new gadgets to gain that each reflect the abilities of the warlords you took them from, like throwing out an aggro drawing clone, an array of shock traps, or two similar variants of a detonatable sticky bomb. None of these are complete game changers from the standard set of skills, but they do provide a few new ways to shake up the core combat just a little. Along with these new major fights, there are also quite a lot of brand new enemy types in this region, with some improved AI, that I found to push and flank in some surprisingly challenging new ways. This is not always the case, you still have many shooting gallery style moments, but this more aggressive and intelligent tweak to the AI is a step in the right direction. On a side note, you'll be seeing a lot of this one mini-boss dude an awkward amount of times in nearly every mission however, but outside of that one small complaint, I really like the new enemy variety. As far as the new activities to take on in Warlords, the new enemy types, and the new things to work towards, these all add some nice variety to the standard flow of the Division 2 without completely trying to reinvent the wheel. Since Warlords of New York is endgame content, upon completion of the main story, you will unlock a brand new progression system called SHD Level. With each new level, you will be able to assign small statistical upgrades to any of your core stats in a Paragon-style, min-max-focused alternate form of character progression. You will also have some new challenges to take on in the older content as well, with the new legendary AI and difficulty setting for some missions. Outside of what you gain from the Warlords of New York expansion, it's hard not to talk about the new Gear 2.0 system that fundamentally changes how everything works in the base game of the Division 2 now for everyone. The stats on guns, armor, and mods have all been completely reworked to be more streamlined, easier to understand, and lock you out of the fun abilities and synergies less often. This was a very smart overhaul to the loot system that makes it simply easier to enjoy gathering and equipping loot without being too bogged down in convoluted stat crunching. Some of the elements still fall victim to the what exactly is that doing concept, but this gear 2.0 overhaul was definitely another step in the right direction. There are other huge changes done to the base game of the Division 2, dozens if not hundreds more than I could all break down here, like big changes to the dark zones, UI tweaks, and quality of life stuff, but ultimately it all amounts to the Division 2 now feeling like it's firing on all cylinders, marking this the perfect time to jump in for the first time, or return to it.
overall, Warlords of New York is not absolutely perfect, nor does it change up the core shooter gameplay of The Division 2 all that much, but it does provide a very captivating and almost mandatory new endgame to pour hundreds of hours into. The region of New York City is a remarkable visual showcase, at least during the day, and offers a worthwhile new mini campaign to play through, new upgrades, and new guns to work towards. Warlords of New York comes out at the best time alongside the Division 2's 2020 overhaul and should not be missed by anyone who likes the simple joys of shooting stuff and gathering loot. Those are my overall thoughts on the Warlords of New York expansion, along with the state of the Division 2 in 2020, and in just a week from when I'm posting this, there is also a new season system coming out as well that gives you brand new targets to try and take down. This looks like it rewards you with mostly cosmetics, but should give you something new to do in working on grinding out those SHD levels. Now, if you happen to enjoy my style of review, consider subscribing to the channel for more, ringing that bell icon to stay up to date on future uploads, and you can also find me on Twitter at BoomstickAlex. Lastly, a special mention to the top supporting YouTube members and patrons you're seeing on screen, who go a long way in perpetuating the future of this individually owned and operated channel. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching!